quiz number one, the math mouse. I thought we already wrote a quiz. Yeah, I typed that quiz up later on, and I called it quiz zero because I didn't feel like changing the numbering system. So the one you already wrote was quiz zero, quiz number one. The key points here, and I'm going to show you two different ways, two different approaches that you can get these. You can do these by counting on the graph, or you can do these mathematically. Both are valid and both are useful. I haven't really done the mathematical approach that much with you yet, which is why I want to kind of show you today. First thing I'm gonna well, first thing I'm gonna do is make the graph bigger so that you can all see. There's number one. And I'm gonna list the transformations in the correct order. Good God. Oh, she must have been in my block B. That's why I was so confused. Helping somebody else this morning. Order, order, order. I'm going to do expansions, compressions first. Then I'm going to do reflections. And then I'm going to do slides. And I'm going to write them in that order as well. Oh, and we have to do my little lame joke. Let's see here. Name. And. Sirki. She gets everything right. It's amazing. Some of you will figure it out. I stole it from another teacher, but as soon as I saw that, it was at a math seminar two years ago, and I was, oh, I'm so using that. My other favorite was uh, if he's doing a fake assignment, like, like just a fake assignment for the kids, the name he puts is, uh, I'm a Chekhov. There's your, I'm a Chekhov. Okay. He had a bunch of stupid names like that. They were great. Two. Vertical or horizontal? I know it's vertical instantly. How do I know? Because if it was horizontal, it would be after the bracket in front of the X somewhere. <laughs> is it next to the Y where it belongs? No, then it's not backwards. This is going to be a vertical expansion by 2. Any other expansions? No. Reflections, those are negatives. I got a negative right there. Vertical or horizontal? How do I know? It's vertical. If it was horizontal, it would be right here. Vertical reflection. Now, there are two ways that I can get the points, on the graph or mathematically. I'll do it mathematically, and I'll do it on the graph. The first key point is negative 3, comma, negative 2. Is that right? I'm going from memory. But is the tip of the tail negative 3, comma, negative 2? You see, I can do it by counting. So hover my pencil right here. Vertical expansion instead of negative 2 down. When I say expansion, what you're really doing is multiplying by 2. So instead of my y coordinate being negative 2, it'll be negative 4. Vertical reflection, positive 4. I can get there that way. Or I could actually just look at my y column here, and I could say if I vertically expand that by 2, it'll be negative 4. And if I vertically reflect it, it'll be positive 4 both of those end me up on that point. The next key point that we start out with, if I recall, was 0, 0. If I vertically expand this by 2, 2 times 0 is still 0. And if I vertically reflect it, negative 0 is still 0. I probably wouldn't have actually rewritten them. I would have clued in and just left the 0 there, but letting you know. Turns out this one ends up being invariant. And I think when you connect them, it's going to look kind of like that. My next key point is 2, comma 2. Again, I can get there in a couple of ways. Either by counting, vertical expansion, reflection. Pretty sure I'm going to end up there. Or I can get there by doing the math. Vertical expansion, reflection. No matter what, I end up at 2, comma, negative 4. I think the next key point is 4, 0. I'm going from memory, but I am right, right? I hope. Vertically expand that. Vertically reflect that 0 and 0 still. It's going to be invariant. Or I could have done it by being on the graph. Vertical expansion, vertical, compre uh, ver vertical reflection. Why don't you be consistent, Mr. Dewey? and use the same color. The next key point is is what uh, five comma one is that right the top of the head Whew. almost blank for a second there again 
Tyler, I can do it mathematically. Vertically expand that by 2 and then vertically reflect it. I'm going to end up at 5 comma negative 2. Or I can do it by hovering my pencil. Vertically expand it, vertically reflect it. I'm going to end up at 5 negative 2. And the last one ends up being 6 comma 0. Now how do I mark these? For two marks, I would give you one mark if you did a vertical expansion. I would give you one mark if you did a vertical reflection. However, I would take a half mark off for each point that was in the wrong place. Now let's talk about how they mark these on the provincial Haley and therefore how I will mark these, okay? Anything, anything, anything that you put on your graph with a solid line is supposed to be part of your final answer. So I was helping a few kids this morning and I noticed a lot of kids did this on their graph before they started. I would have to assume that that was part of your final answer and give you a zero. However, if you did this, the rule is anything you do with a dotted line, I will assume that's part of your work and I will ignore it. Some of you, when you're counting your points, you're doing this. So I end up there, then I end up there, then I end up there. I will assume those three points are part of your final graph and I will take a half mark off for that, a half mark off for that, and a half mark off for that because those are not on the graph. If you want to leave yourself breadcrumb markers, there's a rule we have for that. Instead of putting points, if you put an X there, I assume that's a placeholder, that's a marker, but that's not a point on the graph. Does that make sense? Now, having said that, on your test, because I typed the test up when I got better at graphics, after I typed up this quiz, this quiz I just did by cutting and pasting, and then I learned actually how to make these funky shapes and how to type them in Word. I actually have a light gray silhouette of the original one as a dotted line. You'll barely, barely able to see it. I made it in a light ink. It does photocopy though and you can see it there. So on your test it will be there. Does that make sense? Is that a hand up? Is that awaking? You awake? Okay. Because you're not looking really good right now. It, yes? No. Okay. Question two. This is going to be, I'm positive, uh, two left. I know because it's next to the X, it's backwards. Uh, I got to think about this one. It's four. Oh, it's four down because it's not next to the Y. If it was Y plus four over here, that's also four down. But it's been moved over, so it's no longer backwards. Four down. And again, I'll show you how you can get this mathematically from your key points of negative 3, negative 2, 0, 0, 4, 2, 5, 1, and 6, 0. You could go uh, 2 left, negative 5, negative 2, 2, 3, 4. How am I calculating 2 left? It's really minus 2 from the x coordinate. 4 down. Negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. How am I calculating 4 down, Mitsu? It's really minus 4 from the y coordinate. So you can do it mathematically, or you can just hover the points. And I, you need to know both. I use the points when there's a graph in front of me. I use this method when they don't give me a graph, but they just give me a point and say, where does it end up? Two left, one, two, three, four down. Two left, one, two, three, four down. Connect them. Two left, four down. Connect them. Two left, four down. Is that right? Yeah, I just did a lousy job of graphing that last one. Let's try that again. That looks better. And here, and here, correct? So again, I would give you one mark if you went two left. I would give you one mark if you went four down. However, any point that's in the wrong place, I would take off a half mark. If you went four up, the best you could do is one out of two. Turn the page. Ah, the fun stuff. The good stuff. 
first thing I want to do is ask, is this written in a way that's acceptable? I look here, this coefficient is factored. There are brackets, so I don't need to have my little alarm bell go off here. I'm happy with this. Now I'm going to make a list in the correct order. That two right there, vertical or horizontal? Vertical. Expansion by two or compression by a half? Well, if it was a two right there, everything's backwards because it's next to the Y. Ah, but it's not next to the Y, so it's no longer backwards. This is an expansion by two. I see a one-half, vertical or horizontal. Well, it's after the x, it's, sorry, it's after the f, it's in front of the x, it's inside the function. This is horizontal. Expansion by 2 or compression by a half. It's next to the x, it hasn't been moved, so it is backwards. Compression by a half. Reflections. That guy right there. Vertical reflection. Yo. It's backwards, so it should be an expansion by two. Candy for you later. <laughs> Sorry. Fighting the cold or something here. Not working very well. No excuses. Never mind. I didn't say that. I should have got that right. You know what? I'm giving myself a one hour detention today. I'm going to be here till at least four o'clock. Jeez. Stupid teacher. <laughs> Uh, vertical reflection, I got that one right. Yes, Carly? Woohoo! And this would be a horizontal reflection, yes? And then I think I have four right, four up. And again, I can get this one of two ways. You can do it mathematically. If you list the key points, negative three, comma, negative two, zero, zero, four, two, oh, two, two, Mr. Duke. Four zero five one and six zero. You can go vertically expand by two, negative four. Uh, zero times two is zero. Two times two is four. Zero times two is still zero. One times two is two. Horizontal expansion by two, negative three times two is negative six. Zero times two is zero. Two times two is four. Four times two is Eight. Five times two is ten. Six times two is twelve. <laughs> Might not fit on my graph, but I'm not going to panic. Vertical reflection. Uh, that's going to become a positive. That's going to become a negative, which is going to make a difference. That's going to become a negative. That's going to become a negative, which is going to make a difference. That's going to become a negative. Let's make that negative a bit clearer, Mr. Duick. That's going to stay where it is. Horizontal reflection, that'll become a positive, that'll become a negative, that'll become a negative, that'll become a negative, that'll become a negative. Four right. Ashley, what that really means is add four to all your x's, because that's how you move something four right. This is going to become a ten, a four, a zero, a negative four, a negative six, and a negative eight. Four up, that's like adding four to all your y's. This is going to become, running out of room here, an eight, a four, a zero, a four, a two, and a four. So I should end up at 10 comma eight, 10 over eight up. Is there a dot right there? I should end up at 4-4. Four, four. Is there a dot right there? And I think that was my tail. I have, I'm trying to visualize it, but I think if I'm drawing the tail properly, it should look like that. Although if you drew it this way, I wouldn't really freak out because it's a bit tricky to visualize. <laughs> Apparently, I should end up at 0-0. Zero, zero. I should end up at negative 4-4. Four, four. I should end up at negative 6, 2, and I should end up at negative 8, 4. Negative 8, 4. Is that what you get? 
There it is. Now you could also do it using the graphing method. It was a bit trickier because you had to keep track when you were off in the middle of the page in no man's land for a split second, but then you moved forward and forward. And, and I find if I'm in no man's land, I just kind of call stuff out in my head. I'm at 12 high right. Oh, what were some of them that showed up? Uh, I'm at negative 12 left, but when I move forward right, negative 8. Ah, I'm back on the graph again. Three marks, there was six transformations. I would give a half mark for each transformation, but I would take off a half mark for each point that was incorrect. How many got that one? I'm just curious. Ooh, I'm impressed. Number four, inverse. This is absolutely where I would actually use the point switching the X and Y. Negative three, negative two becomes negative two, negative three. There should be a dot right there. Zero, zero is invariant, but I think your tail starts to look like this. Two, two actually ends up being invariant as well. But four, zero becomes zero, four. Five, one becomes one, five. And six, zero becomes zero, six. Yes, like that. By the way, is that a function? Does that pass the vertical line test? that pass the vertical line? To, oh, no, shadow touches the graph in several locations at the same time. That means you couldn't graph that on a graphing calculator. In case you're wondering, by the way, the original mouse is actually sort of a semicircle, another semicircle, and half of a semicircle that's been flipped if you really wanted to graph it on the graphing calculator, but I didn't care. Number five. Ugh. No, no, wait a minute. I'm a good math student. I can handle this. <laughs> ah! Little alarm bell should go off right now, Sandley. You know why? As I glanced at this, I saw there was a coefficient. I saw there was a slide, but they haven't put brackets around it. Now, I had one student that I was talking to earlier this morning, and she just went, oh, there. Now there's brackets. No! No, that's not the same at all, because if you foil that out, you won't get the original function. You can't just add brackets. What you're really having to do is factor. I'm going to rewrite it. I'm okay with that. A little weird, but I'm okay with it. I'm okay with that. A little weird, but I'm okay with it. Factor out a negative 2. I think I had an x. What number would I put right there so that when I multiply this out, I get a positive 2 with no brackets. I think that. Yes? Turns out, Brett, this is not 2 left. It's 1 right. Let's make my list. Vertical or horizontal? Vertical. Is it next to the Y where it belongs? Well, then it's backwards. Vertical or horizontal? Horizontal. Is it next to the x where it belongs? Yep. Well, then it's backwards. Carly, did I get those both right this time? Woohoo! <laughs> Vertical reflection. Horizontal reflection. Three, is it next to the Y where it belongs? It's vertical and it's backwards. Three down, one right. Or you could have gone one right, three down. The order there doesn't matter. Key is to do expansions, compressions before you do slides. All righty. So, ladies and gentlemen, Start your engines. I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller so I can see everything on the screen. I'll do this one using the graphing method. So I'm going to hover here. Vertical expansion, instead of negative 2 down, I'll be at negative 4 down. Horizontal compression, 1.5. Ah, that's not a bad decimal. I can deal with this. Vertical reflection, instead of negative 4 down, positive 4 up. Horizontal reflection, instead of negative 1.5, positive 1.5. Three down, one, two, three, one right. Do you guys have a point at 2.5 comma one? 
I get a little nervous when there's decimals, but that's not a hideous decimal, so I, I, I can tolerate it. Zero, zero was the next point. Vertically expanded, <clears throat> horizontally expanded, <clears throat> vertically reflected, <clears throat> horizontally reflected, <clears throat> three down, <clears throat> one right. I think we end up with that. <clears throat> two, two was the next one. Vertically expanded, four high, horizontally compress it, one right. Vertically reflected, four down, horizontally reflected, one left, three down, one, two, three, one right. You guys go through zero comma negative seven? No? Yes? Uh, four zero was the next one. Vertically expand zero high, still zero high. Horizontally compress four right. Why, I think that's two right. Vertically reflect zero high, still zero high. Horizontally reflect two right, two left. Three down, unos dos tres, one right. Do you also go through negative one comma negative three? Five one, I bet you is going to be a decimal again. Let's see. Vertically expand, five comma two. Horizontally compress, yeah, two point five comma two. Vertically reflect, negative two. Horizontally reflect, negative two point five. Three down, one two three, one right. You guys end up at negative one and a half, comma negative five, hanging there in midair. And I'm pretty sure I'm guessing the last one's going to be right there. Let's prove it. Six zero vertically expand it, still zero. Horizontally compress it, three. Vertically reflect it, still zero. Horizontally reflect it, negative three. Three down. Three down, one right. Yes, there I am. There's my little mouse. Same as number th three. Uh, three marks, there's six transformations. So a half mark for each transformation, but a half mark off for each point that's in the wrong place. Give yourself a score, please, out of 12. How many 10 out of 12 or higher? Okay. Make sure your name is on it. Pass it inwards, please. Person in the middle, please put them in a nice neat row while facing the same way. We are going to be finishing off the unit today. Yeah. Right now, I'm leaning towards your test being a week from today, which means uh, I'll be doing a big after school tutorial Friday after school, and I'll send an email out to that effect. By the way, you should have gotten an email from me this weekend. Those of you that did not, it sounds like anybody who has a telus.net email, which is not many students, but some parents, those are bouncing back and being rejected by TELUS right now for some strange reason. We're working on it. But y'all got an email from me in theory? If not, check your email. Check your email. Read your email. Occasionally, you might want to check your email. Just be thinking out loud. Okay? Specifically in your workbook, would you be so kind as to turn to page 79? Page 79. Yo. You don't have school Monday? Is that Thanksgiving? Really? It's that fast? It's here already? Eesh. Then it's going to be Wednesday and I'll do the tutorial Tuesday. Because doing a tutorial Friday and then having four days would be stupid. And that also gives me Friday afternoon that maybe nobody will show up and I can go home at a decent hour. My goal right now is to at least once a week drive home without my headlights, but right now I'm over. Y'all on page 79? Man, they're giving you a halt. So you guys had a pro D day week, and then last week you had a half day on Friday. By the way, did you guys come to the 50th? It was, they had some great stuff in the afternoon all set up. Quite impressive. And then you guys get next week Monday off? God. We need to bring in year-round schooling. We're falling behind the rest of the world. On the 14th, you don't have school on Friday either? No, that's wrong. It's late. There is a pro DD later on in the month, but I can't see there being that many days off. Now you're just messing with me. I think you are. 21st is a pro D-Day. 
Nice try there, girl. Can I teach now? Excellent. Did I turn my recording back on? I think I did. I did. So reciprocal transformation. By the way, those of you that were away for that lesson last day, you want to watch it online. Very important. This is going to be two, maybe three questions on your test, minimum. Here's what we said. When they say take the reciprocal, remember the symbol for reciprocal was 1 over f of x. That was what told you to take the reciprocal. What you were doing was taking the reciprocal of all the heights. If you were 5 high, Brett, your reciprocal would be 1 over 5 high, 1 fifth high. If you were 1 fifth high, your reciprocal would be 5 high. In fact, we simplified it. We said this. If your original graph was getting bigger, the reciprocal would get smaller. And if your original graph was getting smaller, the reciprocal would get bigger. What was the invariant heights? There was two of them, one obvious and one a little more obscure you have to think about. What were the invariant heights? Do you remember? One or, or negative one. Anywhere one or negative one high stayed where it was. And so I said, if I'm graphing a reciprocal transformation, I put big, huge dots there because those are going to stay. What was the height that we couldn't take a reciprocal of? Zero. In fact, if our original graph approached zero, our reciprocal often had a vertical asymptote right there. So let's look at example three. Example three says this. The graph of g of x equals 1 over f of x is shown. This is a reciprocal graph. Oh, and the maximum point, this point right here, is at negative 3, comma, negative 2. Sorry, positive, negative 3, comma, positive 2. And the y-intercept right here is at one fifth. It says, given that f of x is a quadratic function, this is a reciprocal of a parabola, sketch the original graph and state the coordinates of the minimum point. Well, let's see. How high am I right there? What did they say the y-intercept was according to this question right now? How high? That's my reciprocal. How high was my original y-intercept then? Five high. My original graph must have gone through right there. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to add my little axis of symmetry for the parabola, which means 3 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up from the vertex. If I go 3 left from the vertex, I'm willing to bet there's another point right there because I know all parabolas are symmetrical. They are. Mr. Dirk, how do you know this is the vertex? Is this the highest point of my reciprocal? Is the vertex the lowest point of my original? See, it, it, they bigger become smaller, smaller become bigger. Oh, as a matter of fact, how high is this vertex right now? Sorry, let me say that again. How high is this maximum point here right now? What does the question say? What does it tell me? Negative 3, 2. You know what my vertex was? What's the reciprocal of positive 2? Careful. Not negative 2. Aha. We're, we're taking the reciprocal, not reflecting. Okay. In other words, my vertex must have still been at negative 3, but it would have been a half high. In fact, as a parabola, oh, which heights would have been invariant? For the reciprocal, which heights would have been invariant? I think one high right there. One high right there. I think it would have done that. I see the question. I'll get to you in a second, Vlad. Yes, ask. The original is too high. Sorry, the reciprocal is too high. If the reciprocal is too high, what height must the original have been? What would have given you a height of 2 after you took the reciprocal? It must have been negative 3, comma, a half. And when I took the reciprocal, I ended up at negative 3, comma, 2. Does that make sense? I, I think that's what the original looked like here, that blue one. And it says, state the coordinates of the minimum point, negative 3, comma, 1 half. Oh, and the y-intercept... 0, 5. If my reciprocal has an intercept of 1 fifth, my original must have been 5 high. 
B says you can write this as a parabola, and we can, but that's math 11. I'm not going to freak out, and I'm not going to bother. I always save this question. This is a good review of the reciprocal transformation for you guys. So having said that, the homework that I gave you, I gave you question number 1A. I'm going to add question 2. And I'm going to add question six. And then I'm going to say, turn, if you would, please, to lesson 12. But you didn't take questions about the reciprocal. I just reviewed it because I think it needs to percolate. But I will next class, absolutely. Lesson 12, the final transformation, the final lesson. Now, on Wednesday, I have for you one big, huge take-home quiz. It's actually a unit review quiz. It covers the entire unit. We'll be going over that on Friday. And on Wednesday, your homework is going to be start working on the great big unit review that I gave out way back when, for which the answer key, showing all my steps, is online at pitmath.com. Click here for today's notes. Go to block A. Somewhere in block A, unit one transformations, it's there. I saw about 10 of you look blank. Go to pitmath.com, click here to access today's notes, go to block A, unit one transformations, and if you haven't figured it out already, if you're ever away, the easiest way to do this is sort by date modified, and the newest stuff will appear on the top, and the latest stuff will appear on the bottom, so there's lesson 11 if you were away, not as a video, but as a PDF file, and transformations review. I gave you transformations review number two, and there is the answer key showing all the steps. So you can download that. Today, last lesson, the absolute value transformation. The absolute value transformation. First of all, it says, recall the definition of absolute value. That's actually the mathematical definition. It says if you're graphing it, graph positive x if you're moving to the right, graph negative x if you're moving to the left, because that's how you take a negative of a negative and make it positive. Anyways, I don't need to worry about that. What you need to know is this. Hey, what's the absolute value of 5? What's the absolute value of 10? What's the absolute value of 0? Careful now. What's the absolute value of negative 5? 5. What's the absolute value of negative 10? Okay. What's the absolute value of a height on a graph? If the height is positive, same answer. Ah, if the height is negative, make it. There, that's the lesson. Okay, your homework, well, no, I guess I should do a few of these. So it's blah, 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 blah. Warm up number two. It says we're supposed to use a graphing calculator. To you, I say, no, no, we're going to use our brains. It says they've graphed f of x, where f of x is x squared minus 4, Haley. And then it says, write the equation for the absolute value of f of x. The absolute value of the heights. Any heights that are positive will be invariant. That will stay where it is. That will stay where it is. Write that down. Any heights that are negative, Tyler, will become positive. Tyler, how high am I right there at the very, very bottom? I think you said it right, but I, someone moved the chair upstairs louder. What's the absolute value of negative 4? That x value won't change, but it'll end up right there. In fact, you know what? It'll like this. This whole thing will flip up. And in fact, that's how I do this. Anything below the x-axis, anything in the negative range, it's like you folded the paper. It's going to fold, flip right up on top of itself. That's the absolute value transformation. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, page 84. Here's your summary. In general, if they give you some graph and then they say, take the absolute value of all of the heights, 
if you're already positive, it stays the same. Identical, fancy word, invariant. If your heights are negative below the x-axis, it ends up reflecting above the x-axis. It's really easier to do than to explain. Here's a graph. Sketch the absolute value of that graph. Okay. That's going to stay where it is because it's positive as a height. This is going to reflect up. And this is going to reflect up. And that's the equation for a little devil's cap with little horns. Or a marauder's cap with biking horns. B says, now sketch, now sketch the reciprocal. Eh, it's overkill right now. Forget it. Example one. This is much more similar to what you'll get on the test. Says the graph of f of x is shown. Sketch that. The absolute value of this. Okay. Again, what they're really saying here, Carly, is sketch the absolute value of the heights. Because f of x, that's the heights. So any heights that are already positive are going to be invariant. This ain't moving. Ah, but to the left of that, the graph is below the x-axis. L is it's going to simply flip right up. It's going to look like, let's see, about there. It's going to go meow, meow. Yeah, the sound effects help. B says, hey, I'll sketch the reciprocal. Uh. Okay, I'll try this one. Sketch the reciprocal of the absolute value. Sketch the reciprocal of this here graph that I've done in red. Okay. Um, oh, anywhere one high is going to be invariant. So where am I one high? It looks like I'm one high right there, right there. Right? And it looks like this whole line is one high. Looks like to me it starts at about a little past, just shy of negative three. So just shy of negative three, there's going to be an entire line one high. Are there any other heights on my red graph that are one high? No. Are there any on my red graph that are negative one high? There were on the original, but not on the absolute value. OK. Oh, the next was uh, anywhere my graph touches 0 is going to be a vertical asymptote. There's going to be a vertical asymptote at negative 1.5. Now we do my little bug trick. Standing right here, imagine standing right there. As I move to the right, my graph is getting closer to zero. What's my reciprocal going to do? What was the reciprocal of getting closer and closer to zero? Go away from zero. We had, we, actually, I used a little phrase, shoot off to. It's going to actually shoot off to infinity and beyond. Oh, don't use green, Mr. Duick. Now, hover right here, because that point is that point right there. As I move to the left, I'm getting closer to zero. As I move to the left, I'm getting closer to zero. What's the reciprocal going to do? Shoot off to infinity.
as I move to the right this way, as I move this way, Justin, what's my original graph doing? Getting bigger or getting smaller? Bigger. So my reciprocal is going to get, it's going to curve towards zero like this. Now, this is a bit of an unusual one because my original levels out at about 1.5. How high does it level out at? What's the height right here, Ellen? What's the reciprocal of 3? It's actually going to, when it gets to 1.5, be a horizontal line one-third high. Instead of getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to 0, it's going to level out. Now, it's really tough to draw accurately, especially if you're freehanding. But I, I do have to say, you do this correctly, and that's what it would look like. There's a reciprocal of an absolute value. Turn the page. Page 85 is one of those pages that you should probably dog ear or put a post-it note in because there is a lovely summary of everything. What's your homework? Try number one. Also, some of the questions I assigned last, uh, like 10 minutes ago, from reciprocals. Try number one. Number three. Four is pretty tough. I'll try that. Six, seven, and eight. Okay. Technically, that's the unit. I need to dot some I's and cross some T's next class. But that's it. Unit 1, transformations. Before I turn you loose. You may recall that one of the themes I've tried to bring in throughout this unit is a certain video game, Mario Brothers, I called it, because all, Super Mario Brothers, because all of you have played it when you were young children. We talked about how that was a function. We talked about how when you moved them to the left, you were replacing all the x's with x plus 1. When you moved them to the right, you were replacing all the x's with x minus 1. When he jumped, you were replacing all the y's with y minus 1 and then y plus 1 through them up and down. When he ate the mushroom, you were replacing the x's with a half x and the y's with a half y, and now he's twice as big. So, a little walk down amnesia lane for you guys. Oh, hang on. Got to do it this way. This was about uh, five years ago. This was at a talent show at a university. I thought this was quite clever. At Gordon College.
So there's your walk down the Amnesia Lane. Remember when childhood was fun? Okay. You got about a half an hour. Class is yours. Get caught up. If you finish everything, start working on the great big unit review. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have extra copies. Yes, you may. Okay.